CatteractCoach.com. Thick cortex and epinucleus remains. How are you going to effectively remove this with the IA probe? So let me just show you the case, and I'll show you what leads to this. So this is the capsorexis, and you can see it's just an average cataract. Good 5 millimeter rexis. Here's the issue, is the hydrodissection. So an insufficient degree of hydrodissection. So you know the key of hydrodissection is to separate the capsule from the lens material. But you see that golden ring we just, there you go, that golden ring, that is hydrodelineation. So what we've created is, we've created a big endonucleus. So we've got good hydrodelineation done, but I don't think we did enough hydrodissection. So the correct move here would be to go back and do more hydrodissection. Now the nucleus, or this endonucleus, can be easily removed now. We'll get that chopper in there, tending up the iris there to fix that reverse pupillary block. Chop this cataract in half, that's an easy chop, two halves done, and we'll take each half out of the bag. But you can see each half that we're removing is a little bit smaller because we're removing the endonucleus. We're leaving behind an epinuclear shell and some thick cortex. And again, the reason behind this is we didn't have the best hydrodissection. We saw the golden ring and had good hydrodelineation, which is separation of the epinuclear shell from the endonucleus, but we didn't have good hydrodissection, which is separating the lens cortex from the capsule. And like we've had a video here on cataractcoach.com about cortical cleaving hydrodissection. So now the question is, what do you do? Do you try to get it out with the phaco probe? No, don't do that. Here's why. Because you haven't loosened it up. This epinuclear shell is not released from the posterior capsule in the capsular bag. So let's go to the IA probe. It's a lot safer. It may not be as fast or efficient, but it's safer. So now going around trying to remove this nice and easy and we're just doing this back and forth motion to really help free this shell from the posterior capsule from the whatever cortex is remaining so the goal is to first get that epinuclear shell out and it may take a lot of maneuvering back and forth and you can see this is a prolonged thing in this case it seems like cortex removal is going to take longer than actual nucleus removal now we've got it out, let's polish up that capsular bag, that undersurface of the anterior capsular rim. That looks pretty good. There's a little bit of viscoelastic there, but now we've got a nice, clean, empty posterior capsule or capsular bag. If you look through the posterior capsule, you can see there's some vitreous opacities, which is floaters. There's that viscoelastic going inside the eye. That all looks pretty good. Now let's watch that one more time. This is the replay of that cortex removal. So eye probe goes in the eye, and look at the technique here. We want to grab it and get as much of it as we can and then bring it centrally. And I want to tease that cortex or that epinuclear shell away. And there's a lot of movement. Look at the eye movement back and forth and back and forth. This is very typical of really trying to release the grip of this lens material from the capsule. So again, going in all quadrants, you can see we really want to keep this as one big sheet and then aspirate it down. And once that's complete, now it looks pretty good. There you see, you see we're cleaning up the undersurface of the posterior capsule or the anterior capsule rim. Everything looks really clean here. This patient's going to do fine. So if you get a case like this, the issue was it was an insufficient degree of initial hydrodissection. Your hydrodissection wasn't as good as you thought it was. And now is the issue in my case here. So let's finish up the case. You can see there's the eye well in the capsule bag. It's a normal rexus. Everything else looks great. This patient's going to do beautifully. So that's not a complication. It's just a learning uh, step here. We learn from this material. We learn that, hey, if I do a little bit better hydrodissection next time, I won't have to spend as much time doing that epinuclear shell removal with the IA probe. Notice how we seal up the incision here at the end, do my technique. Don't do those two lateral wall white spots that people, no, 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 no. Do it this way, trust me. And then the lens is centered, nice overlap of the optic by the capsorexis, beautifully centered up too. That looks great. Case is done. So I hope you learned something interesting in this case. I know you love the YouTube videos, but check out the website, cataractcoach.com. A lot easier to navigate. We have a complete list of articles and videos. You can go and check on any of these categories and explore more. 
You can also search. There's a search engine that's really effective. You can see Gore-Tex lenses like this. And finally, you can look up about me. There's a link that has my surgical instruments. Now you don't even have to ask me. You can just find out for yourself. What's the name of those forceps?